Hi everybody, hope you're doing marvellously well. This is a fun one. Ryan Lennertz here from Sweetwater came up to us a couple of days ago and said he'd like to do like top five lists of all of my favourite equipment. Mm -hmm. And luckily, because we're in Sweetwater, they have a schnizzle ton of equipment. Attached to this beautiful Studio A is a rather lovely and absolutely enormous store. And then about another 100 yards away is some of the biggest warehouses I've ever seen in my life, full of gear. So he asked me my top five in all of these different things, which we are now about to do. And of course, I think you pretty much have everything that I love in stock. I believe so. Uh, and we pulled as much as we could to... Uh model them Vanna White style. If you would like to, or if you would li like to, I, your, your face is a little prettier than mine, so we'll, we'll do it up to you. Don't about that. I don't know. Let's get started. What do you want to ask me? Sure. For the different options and combinations of microphones that you yep. can choose from at a mic locker, what is your top five microphones? This is a really, really difficult one, but the great thing is having reviewed, tested, and probably most importantly, owned and used on a regular basis. The one or two I normally gravitate towards are all based on either A, specific, like really powerful sounds that can only be achieved with that microphone, but also variable sounds, being able to use it in multiple different situations. Because the great thing about plugins is you can get a microphone that is very honest sounding and then use plugins and shape it in any way, or obviously use hardware. And I think for me, the number one mic for that is, is the Lewitt 640 TS. I think was... One of the most revolutionary mics. Kaurak had a microphone in the 70s, which was actually people seek out now for complete kind of surround recording. A wonderful, wonderful mic. And the 640TS, although it's not that, it does so much that I want because it is two capsules like completely glued together. So the phase is perfect. It gives you the most amazing stereo recording. We put it on a drum kit maybe about seven years ago when they first released it, Blair Center at United. It was a wonderful experience. And put it over the drum kit, pan it left and right, and it was the best sounding drum recording I've ever done in stereo. Because zero phase issues. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it helped that it was in United and it was Blair Center. <laughs> sure. With a beautiful, beautifully tuned and wonderfully performed uh, performance, you know. Uh, and the other thing about it, of course, is it's infinitely variable. So you can use it in Omni, you can make it cardioid, hypercardioid, supercardioid, figure of eight, whatever it is. And it is unbelievably accurate sounding. I think that's one thing that Lewitt do maybe the best, or at least close to, is not impart a sonic characteristic, just capture the sound accurately. Now, this is where the whole conversation gets interesting, because that might be in my top five microphones, but then some of the other microphones I love are ones that have really strong sonic characteristics. Mm -hmm. And I think arguably one of the best microphones on the market at the moment is the Loughton Atlantis, which I do believe is sitting over there. In all its glory. In all its glory. And we absolutely love this microphone for all of the same kinds of reasons being, you know, with the, with the Lewitt, it allows you to capture something incredibly accurately, and then you manipulate the sound inside of your DAW. Mm -hmm. And that's a, and it's relatively inexpensive. It's like a $700 microphone. Mm -hmm. This is a more expensive microphone, but it is substantial. First yes. of all, it weighs, yeah, it, it feels like a 47. It yeah. feels like a proper made 47. It's beautiful. It has obviously three different polar patterns here that are available between, um, Omni, Cardioid, and Figure of Eight. And frankly, 99% of my life I spend in cardioid, you know, for vocals and stuff. But figure of eight's great. The classic John and Paul on either side. That's why they have the U48s in, at Abbey Road. And Omni, of course, if you want to stick it in the middle of a room, capture a whole band or whatever it might be. There's an off and then two different pad settings here. And then it has all of these different sounds yes. that you can get for it. You get the neutral and then you get these two completely different colored sounds. And they're not subtle differences. They're proper differences. Mm -hmm. So when you get this, you feel like you have three microphones. Absolutely. You really do have three completely different sounds. You have a very classic kind of darker, as it were, sound that we loved in certain situations. The neutral sound is unbelievable. It means we had it on overheads and it just completely changed how you feel the drum sound. Mm -hmm. So to me, this is just as valuable a microphone as something that is incredibly accurate that I then can manipulate, you know, inside of the box. Harping back to the build quality. 
Yeah. Pretty freaking amazing. Yeah. And I think it makes a statement. I think this is an important thing when we're talking about uh, microphones as well. If you're a commercial studio owner, you need to make a statement. You need, you want somebody to walk in and go, oh, they're a proper studio. And unfortunately, you know, so many people have said to me that they lose work because the people come in, they don't see a name they recognize or people associate recording studios with consoles. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's been a big move and I love it. So these desks that have gear in it, so they give that feeling of it mm -hmm. rather than just having a rack sitting off to the side. But ultimately, this is a beautiful very, very versatile, incredible sounding mic. Um, I think we did a, a demo with this and Mikhail, didn't we? And it was pretty phenomenal. Eric will have a link underneath. So on that tact, we can't really ignore the obvious. If you are a studio owner and you are doing commercial work, having this next mic, it's pretty tough to beat. Yeah. And that would be a Neumann U87. Yes. The reason why I bring this up, and I know so many of you are probably going to say what an obvious choice, but it is a good obvious choice. Because the thing about an 87 is it says, first of all, I have enough money to buy a Neumann. <laughs> I interviewed Hugh Padgham, Steve Lillywhite, Ed Cherney, you know, some of the greatest producers and engineers ever. And I ask them, I've asked this of pretty much everybody, if you had one or two microphones to make a record, what would those microphones be if you only had one or two microphones? Ed said um, SM7 and an 87. Yes. Hugh said a 57 and an 87. Mm -hmm. And Steve Lillywhite said a 57 and an 87. The common thread is the Norman U87. When I first heard it, I always expected it to be the most neutral sounding mic. It is not the most neutral. It's a very colored. It's colored, yeah. Very colored, very radio ready, as they say. Out yeah, there. It, it, it softens those transients ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. When we did a shootout of microphones on, on a grand piano a couple of years ago, we put up, I don't remember how many it was, Eric, 12 pairs of microphones. The Lewitt 640TS came out as everybody's favorite because it sounded exactly like the piano. Yeah. It was ridiculous. But this was a close second because it still had the characteristic of exactly how the piano sounded, but it just seemed to be just a little bit smoother. It yeah. didn't quite have a, 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 when it was a little bit too bright, it seemed to just roll it off a little bit. It just rolled in those transients. Maybe by late 60s, early 70s standards, when, when these came out, it was probably one of the most neutral mics you could get. But the thing about it is, as I'll go into a recording studio and they will have, you know, 10 of these sitting in, in, in their mic closets and... I would say, ask them, most of them have never been repaired, right. and they're 40 or 50 years old. Mm -hmm. So there's something about a Neumann that says, yes, I'm a professional studio owner, um, I'm working with the best, and most importantly, I'm working with something that's probably going to last the length of time that you want to be a professional studio. And to, your, and to your point, the price point on those, it's not necessarily because of the components that are in there, but it's because of the the tolerance yeah. and the, the the frequency response that they make sure that all of the Neumann microphones have. It's a very, very small margin yeah. of error that they're willing to accept. And if they yeah. don't, they, they start again. So there's something to be said about those 40, 50-year-old microphones that have not just stood the test of time, but have credibility that they've built right. in being very picky and very choosy about what microphones go out the door. What, what is interesting is when you buy a quote-unquote matched pair, they don't call it a matched pair. They don't, you don't need to. You don't need to. Yeah. We have, uh, we actually had two pairs of match pairs, didn't we, at one stage? All they are is consecutive serial number mm -hmm. microphones. Absolutely. But if you flip them out, you cannot tell the difference. Nope. Do you feel the U87 isn't done justice through maybe bus power interfaces or maybe, you know, more entry level preamps? That's a, re that's a really good question. I have not had personal experience with that. We've used 87s and all of these. When we test our microphones out, and I'm sure many of you know this, we typically use an inexpensive interface. Mm -hmm. um, we've been using Audion interfaces for most of our gear demos for around about five or six years now. Mm -hmm. And we do it specifically. Yes, we're fans of Audion. They make great products. I know Sweetwater love them. Everybody loves them. Of course. But it's more about the fact that most of you watching are using that level of interface. Right. And so even if we're demoing a piece of expensive hardware, we'll use an interface that anybody could afford. Because it seems like that's the real world. You know, don't get me wrong, we love Apogee. We've, we've, we're, we're big fans of some of the best companies in the world, uh, the most high end. But it seems like 
Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've tested everything with the audience, mm. and I don't really feel any, I've had any negative responses with any of them, quite frankly. Mm. Yeah. I think this is, this is the way to go. This makes a statement. It just says, I'm a professional, but the bottom line is, is you don't, if you're on your own, and you're making music for yourself or for your band, and it's not a commercial studio, you don't necessarily have to spend this kind of money to get these kinds of results. But if you are a commercial studio owner and you really want to make a statement of like, I'm serious, having a U87 on a stand when somebody walks in, sees a Neumann name, it does make a, a big statement. Plus, of course, the durability is absolutely oh, ridiculous. Absolutely. Yeah. I love these microphones, but I will admit, you know, Three and a half thousand dollars or whatever they come in at now. Sounds about it, right. Yeah, it's where the Atlantis is how much? Uh, sub two thousand. Yeah, believe. sub two thousand. So, you know, if we're talking about value for money, the Atlantis certainly is is gonna give you bang for the buck for the results. Mm-hmm. But if you're talking about commercial studio of any level, this is gonna give you bang for the buck in a different way. Yeah. And honestly, I lost it after a U87 my whole career. As we all do. Anybody yeah. getting started or yeah. is just now entering into the commercial studio world. Yeah. I, when we got our first U87 and my, my, my first studio, it was like, oh. <laughs> we were just like. I had the privilege of the first studio I worked in. I uh, had a project of miking a drum set with whatever I wanted to. I threw a yeah. U87 on a floor tom. Sounded fantastic. Nobody told me no. That's the only reason I did it. <laughs> Nobody told you no. Is a Nobody good told me no. <laughs> the R10, the Roya R10, is one of my favorite microphones ever. These all, By the way, these are all some of my favorite. And you want to talk about establishing some credibility without breaking the bank. Yeah. I mean, what are these coming at? Six, seven hundred? I think maybe five, unless uh, five or six. The, the point is, is like, it's a Roya. It's a proper... This is, you know, when people talk about ribbon mics, it's always, oh, you know, oh, the 121s or the 122V. And so you can get into a really well-made, name-recognized ribbon mic for a lot less than $1,000, five or 600 bucks. And frankly, it sounds amazing. It does. It sounds really, really good. When we first demoed these, we were blown away and... I actually spoke to, I think to John Jennings at the time and said, you might be shooting yourself in the foot here for the 121 sales because they're, but then I realized that the 121 is, is what I suppose is commonly known as an industry standard. I hate that term, but we all hear it. And every major commercial studio, most pretty much every engineer worth his salt that I know, um, they have a 121 or two in their arsenal for guitar recording, you know, combined with a 57, et cetera. But this allows people who can't get into it or don't want to get into that kind of price range to get a ribbon. And most importantly, you can get a pair of these. Yes. For a lot less than just buying one 121. Mm-hmm. It means that now you can have a pair of ribbons to do overheads, to do pianos, to do room mics, to do whatever you want. You know, for value for money, it's going to be, of these microphone choices, it's definitely going to be the Roya R10 and, and the Lewitt really do stand head and shoulders above the competition for, for value for money, those two microphones. And I think we'd be remiss if we didn't tell people, if you're looking for a 121 sound for yeah. 600 bucks, this doesn't do it doing a shootout no, side do by side. But, but if, if you're you looking want a ribbon, a ribbon microphone that's yeah. going to take some heat, it's going to yeah. take some volume, something you can throw in front of. Any cab, any yep. you know, any speaker really, if 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 you would like to, and it's going to get the job done. You're going to get a good result on the front end. This but see, it. here's my feeling: it's brighter than a 121. It is. It kind of makes it a bit more usable in yeah. more situations, especially more modern recordings, where if you yeah. want something to cut through the mix a bit more. Yeah, you you get that ribbon warmth that you want, but you get a better high end. Mm-hmm. That makes it just a little bit more durable. And I get it. I think that, like, to reiterate, they got themselves into a position with the 121 where it doesn't touch the sales. Mm -hmm. This gets to people that want pairs of microphones that are affordable. Absolutely. Which is how I discovered Lewitt, for instance, years ago, is I wanted a pair of 414s for overheads and rooms. And I was like, I don't want to spend that much money on a pair of 414s. And at the time, somebody, a friend of mine said to me, oh, they had a mic called an LCT 550. said, buy that. Sounds like a 414 fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. So I got a pair that... And and it got me into discovering a whole new range of microphones. So if this could be your entry drug into getting a 121 or or a 122V, which is a gorgeous microphone. And you and I have spoken about this a couple of days ago, the perfect segue into the perfect marriage Yes, with a 121 or a ribbon microphone yes. in general, which I don't believe we have here with us, but I'm sure we could just reach in any of our back pockets and have one because 
every studio has it, is the Shure SM57. Correct. It's an interesting mic, the 57. The 57 is, I would hasten to say, and I'm not the only person to say this, um, and definitely not, definitely not the first, <laughs> is it's the sound of rock and roll. Yeah. It really is. You know, a 57 on a guitar cab is what most people will think of as a guitar sound. Alongside a ribbon microphone like an R10 or yeah. 121. Yeah. But a 57 on a snare is also the sound of a snare drum. Yep. I would argue that, that that's being challenged now. Um, Loughton have just brought out this new snare drum mic that we're going to demo. Mm-hmm. And we've just demoed that, and, and it's pretty darn special. But at the end of the day, it is probably the ultimate utilitarian mic. Absolutely. An SM57. I don't know what they retail at now, but it's about the 100-ish. Yeah, 99. 99. So 99 bucks gets you, if you're starting out and you want the sound of an electric guitar that you have heard your whole life, for $99 you can get to it. And I, I, I sell this a lot. I did a track for the Aqua Marine soundtrack I don't know, 20 years ago, whatever it was. And I cut all the acoustics at my house on a Digi 001 mm. because I took the session home. And I, so I'd come back at like midnight and put the acoustics down. And I had my beaten up 70s Yamaha acoustic, which I love. And all I had was an SM57 and my Digi 001. I loaded it up and I did all of the acoustics, all the arpeggios, the rhythm parts, all with a 57 on it. You know, edited it as tight as I possibly could that night, sent off the tracks from a house to Mark Ender who mixed it the next day. He woke up in the morning in Florida, I think he was in, and kind of uploaded it all and called me the next night and said, oh, I love the sound of those acoustics. How did you do it? (laughs) Digi 001, you know, 57, um, and a beaten up 70s Yamaha acoustic. And I told him and he went, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, the SM57 on acoustic guitar is one of my favorite acoustic guitar mics. Like, (laughs) mind blown. And because it's, it's mid-range focused. Yes. It's, it's definitely got some high mid bite. I personally don't like overly pretty acoustics. I don't like 10 to 12K shimmer, unless it's specifically a percussive sound that I want. And I certainly don't like boomy acoustics. Sure. And one of my favorite things uh, with mic pre's is, and EQs is to boost about 1.2K and actually pull a little bit of mid-range into an acoustic guitar. So here, that kind of boxy mix, it wasn't boxy, but that just kind of, high mid boost and that lack of low lows um, and no need for a kind of condenser, you know, high highs worked perfectly in the mix. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's pretty glowing, glowing uh, response. Yeah. Well, and to your point, you know, there are other microphones that are sure. starting to challenge the, the, the 57, but there's starting to be said about the brand equity behind the 57. Yeah. It's, it is the foundation of what all these other microphones that are trying yeah. to, not really replicate the 57, but be another tool in alongside or instead of a 57, like the SE v, uh, V7X, or yeah. uh, even getting to snare microphones like the like the M80, the yeah. Telefunken M80, which of course get into a higher price point, but yeah. it's all because the 57 laid the pathway for all these other companies to do yeah. what the 57 already accomplished. Well, what's interesting, I think, with the Loughton is Loughton have made a snare mic like AKG, mm-hmm. have made a kick mic, or Audix with the D5 have made a kick mic. They've decided to make a microphone that they're just saying, it's a snare drum It's a mic. snare mic, called the Loughton snare mic. Yeah, so they're boosting low lows, and they're boosting some of the snap at the top, mm-hmm. and you'll put it on the snare, and you're like, that sounds like a snare drum. Yeah. Now, I love 57s top and bottom on a snare, but you do have to work them. Any engineer will tell you, you have to dial in some low lows and you certainly have to boost the high end. You've got the mids there like you want it, but you do have to do that to just kind of get it to sound like the snare in the room. Loughton have gone out of their way to make a snare drum mic that's just for snares. Right, absolutely. Now I've got, got a list here because <laughs> we had an honorable mention list when we went through this. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is the point. Ryan came to me and said, I want you to do five. It's like, Ryan, there's no way to do five. I asked you to pick a favorite kid. Yeah. At least your top five favorite kids. It, it, it's really, really tough. And you've heard me wax lyrically about this. And I think it's pretty eclectic, but I do, I do feel like you have to throw in some kick drum mics. Absolutely. Here. We initially talked about a D112, which is loved and hated by lots of people. The people that grew up using D12s and have a love of that kind of 70s kind of just thud with mm. no attack. Right do really like that. And, I, and we have a D12, an original D12. But I've always, the D112 for me when I first started was a revelation because it, it had that, had that, 
sort of low end boost, had a little bit of scoop in the low mids, and it had a little bit of attack on it. So I've always loved a D112. But I will say, even though we didn't put it in our list, you know, if you're going for a more rock, metal-y kind of sound, the Audix D5 is pretty hard to beat. Mm-hmm. I mean, it sounds like 90% of the way there. Absolutely. And I think with all of these tools we're talking about, most of these microphones we're talking about have a certain sen- sense of versatility. Mm-hmm. But I think I also love microphones that just do one job really, really well, which is even though the snare mic we're talking about doesn't make it into a top five because of the flexibility and, and the thing about that Loughton snare mic is it's, it's a snare mic. The thing about a D112 is it's a kick drum mic mm-hmm. or a D5 or it's D5, it's a kick drum mic. Now also to talk about the Lewitt, obviously the 640TS was the first mic that came out of that ilk, but Austrian Audio made in Austria by also by former AKG employees, make the OC, I think it's the 818, 818. which is essentially the same idea as the Lewitt. And again, a wonderful, wonderful mic and has to be in the honorable mentions. Absolutely. Um, definitely do a shootout. Um, love both those microphones. And then last, but definitely no means least, I wanted to put this in our top five, but I just, I just felt like it's a little bit more expensive, and it's about five k, isn't it? About, so about, yeah, they're just yeah, just under five. But it's a, for those of you that do have the extra cashola, you know, you've already got your eighty seven, and you just want to show off a little bit, and you don't have thirty plus thousand dollars to spend on a vintage U forty seven. Please, 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 please try out Wade's microphone. The Chandler Red is just Mm -hmm. unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite microphones, but we don't talk about it maybe as much as we could because a lot of the audience don't have that you know, disposable income. But whenever we've used it, it's like the Atlantis has a lot of different sounds built into it, but it definitely has, even though they don't claim it because they're very aware, they don't want to take away the legacy of, of it but they don't claim that it's a u47 anyway shape or form <laughs> but it is an amazing alternative when you don't want to or cannot spend 30 plus thousand dollars getting a vintage u47 get yourself at least try it out the chandler red mic is mm-hmm. unbelievable and has so much variety of sound so that had to be an honorable mention it would be just a little bit scary to put it in the top five as like must have sure. microphones yeah um, because it's in a different price point but um there you go that's what happens when you ask me to pick five and i can't and it ends up as being like 10 yeah no totally understand as someone that is uh enabled by the the gear addiction here every day <laughs> and what's tough with the small diaphragm condensers so here we are so small diaphragm condensers the lewitt 040 mm-hmm. 99 bucks uh yes 99 dollars yes phenomenal microphone we recorded a whole a whole song vocals pianos yeah. Drums, every instrument, guitars, everything using that microphone. Yeah. An amazing microphone. Great microphones for non-acoustically friendly rooms. If, yeah. they, if they want a bit more focus, but they want that yeah. big, you know, the, that condenser sound, uh, the, and in a great price point to any small diaphragm condenser microphones, AT2020. I'm a huge Audio-Technica fan. They don't get enough love. Yeah. Uh, right. The 2035 was my first... Yep. XLR microphone, the Samson G track was my first studio. Yep. And <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Audio Technica is 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 up there. They the array of, of price points, very modern sounding, very affordable. Yep. And they you know, you can put a 2035 in front of anything and, and it would, you know, yep. of course. Well, I'm a big Audio Technica fan. Yep. They don't get enough love. They haven't really connected in the States in the way they should. I agree. And I've talked to Audio Technica. Hi, Audio Technica, if you're watching, about that. Um, there's certain things that um, I've never really I go into studios. When when I left um, England for the first time to come over here and start recording over here, every studio I knew had Audio Technica and Biodynamic microphones. Mm-hmm. Like an M160 was everywhere. Mm-hmm. Another great microphone. Yeah, a wonderful, wonderful microphone. Obviously, you know everybody knows it as being the the Zeppelin sound, the M160. Yeah. Wonderful, great, amazing uh, drum mic and everything mic. Biodynamic M88, another incredible microphone. I also think another industry standard, if you want to say that you know your pencil condensers, probably outside of Neumann, probably the AKG 451 yeah. is another one of those, I hate the phrase, I'm going to use it again, industry standards. If you go to most studios and you ask for a, a pencil condenser, they'll mm. give yeah. you a 451. It, it, is, it is a microphone that others are judged against. I do think lots of people have come very, very close. And it's on most hi hats. It's yeah. on it's on most overheads as yeah. well. AKG is known as their 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 top end 
shimmer, if you will. It's great for bringing out the transient and, and, and yep. the shimmer of the drum set for definitely more than anything. One pair of microphones that I, I cannot miss out, of course, are the Mojave, the mm-hmm. 201s. I think it's the 201 FETs, is correct. that correct? That's it. They work really well on my voice. Yeah. And I'm not a very good singer, as everybody knows. And they seem to add a little bit more angst and and and, and edge to to the mid range of my voice that actually made me sound. Not, when I tend to sing, you know, I, I'm like everybody. I want to sound like John Lennon, but I end up sounding like a pretty version of Paul McCartney. You know, I don't quite have the angst in my voice. So it, you know, there are worse things to sound like. Yeah, what I, I I'm I'm overly complimenting myself. My point is, is like I have a kind of uninteresting middle of the road voice i don't have any kind of you know, angst in there and the 201 actually added a little bit of extra bite to my voice i didn't even know it was there so thank you mojave but we really like those as utilitarian and the reason why i said pairs i feel like a pair of 201s are an affordable way to get high quality overheads pianos etc so it's an interesting combo here these microphones are all about like how i would build you know, between all of the mics we mentioned, not just the top five, I think that would be a splattering of all of those would give me everything I needed in a recording studio. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's what happens when Ryan asks me to come up with five and I come up with 42. Sure. Um, good reference there. 42, anybody? <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. I really appreciate it. There will be links, of course, to all of these microphones, well beyond the five. Um, <laughs> and uh, any ideas? What are your favorite microphones? Please leave us your favorite microphones. What would make your top five? Thanks, everyone. So long. Farewell. Have a good day and au revoir. Adios. Goodbye. Goodbye.